the U.S. is opening back up. The White House says fully vaccinated foreign visitors can start entering the U.S. on November 8th. This comes as the TSA says 40 percent of employees are unvaccinated as the deadline looms. A school official in Texas is under fire for telling teachers if they have a book on the Holocaust, they also must have one opposing the historical documentation of it. And port officials in California expect the supply chain backlog to last into next summer. That's despite news that the Port of L.A. will start operating 24-7. Tune into Deep Dive as we explore these topics and more. Hello and welcome. This is Deep Dive and I'm Tiffany Meyer. The U.S. is opening its borders. The White House says fully vaccinated foreign visitors can't start traveling to the U.S. on November 8th. This relaxes current bans that have been in place since 2020. The new guidelines apply to America's air, land and sea borders. A White House official says more details are coming soon about very limited exceptions and which COVID-19 vaccines will be accepted. It will likely be similar to what the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention already told airlines. They said vaccines accepted for air travel include those approved for use in the U.S. and those with an emergency use listing from the World Health Organization. This comes as the Transportation Security Administration says 40 percent of its workers are unvaccinated and the deadline is looming. They need to be fully vaccinated by November 22nd, right before the busy Thanksgiving travel period. The clock is ticking as it takes weeks for doses to kick in. Even with the single-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine, employees would have to get the shot by November 8th. The TSA administrator says the agency is creating contingency plans in case of a staff shortage. Now, let's turn to the nation's capital. President Biden has signed the debt limit hike into law. For now, the U.S. will continue to meet its obligations. But lawmakers will have to revisit the issue at the end of the year, when they'll also be working to pass a federal funding bill to avert a government shutdown. And what about the supply chain bottleneck? Port officials in California expect the supply chain backlog to last into next summer. That's despite news that the Port of L.A. will start operating 24-7. The deputy executive director of the Port of Long Beach told the Epoch Times, quote, we think it'll be the summer of 2022 before we clear all 60 ships. Of course, if we take some measures now and everyone in the supply chain starts expanding their hours of operation, we are going to get there sooner. Other supply chain issues include the shortage of truck drivers, shortage of equipment to move the containers, and lack of space to put it all. L.A. warehouses logged a record low vacancy rate of 1 percent in the third quarter. Maritime expert Sal Mercogliano says addressing one end of the supply chain does not solve the problem. He said everything must be done simultaneously. That includes addressing the truck driver shortage and having retailers increase their receiving operations. Reuters reports there are over 60 ships at the Port of Los Angeles and Long Beach, waiting to unload some 500,000 containers. And another 25 ships are scheduled to arrive by next week. And speaking of supply chain issues, what about inflation? The Labor Department released the latest consumer price index on Wednesday. It's a key inflation gauge that measures how much Americans pay for goods and services. The index rose about 0.4 percent from August to September, while year-over-year prices increased by a sharp 5.4 percent. The department's report breaks down how much prices have increased for certain key services and goods compared to September last year. Prices for rental cars have gone up the most by 42.9 percent, followed by fuel oil, 42.6 percent, and gas, 42.1 percent. Most goods and services are becoming more expensive. Propane, kerosene, and firewood are up 27.6 percent. Used cars and trucks jumped 24.4 percent. Uncooked beef steaks surged 22.1 percent. Bacon and similar products rose 19.3 percent. Furniture by 11.2 percent. Meats, poultry, fish, and eggs by 10.5 percent. New cars and trucks increased 8.4 percent. Electricity rose by 5.2 percent. Restaurant prices rose 4.7 percent. And rent went up 2 According to the Labor Department, wages only rose by 4.6 percent compared to the year before. That means inflation is outpacing wage growth. Some economists, including those of the Federal Reserve, 
have said that the current inflation surge is transitory, but prices have continued to rise. Analysts have blamed a variety of factors for the current inflation, including supply chain disruptions and bottlenecks, energy shortages in the Asia-Pacific and Europe, concerns related to the pandemic, and vaccine mandates. The White House promised on Wednesday to attempt to alleviate supply chain issues. Now, let's turn to a topic of controversy. A school official in Texas is under fire for telling teachers if they have a book on the Holocaust, they also must have one opposing the historical documentation of it. The executive director of curriculum for a suburban Dallas school district made the comment at a training session for elementary school teachers. School officials were explaining how teachers should implement a new law in Texas, Texas House Bill 3979, that seeks to restrict discussion of race and history in schools. A staff member recorded this exchange with Gina Petty in a hallway after the session had ended among a smaller group of educators. Just try to remember the concepts of 3979 and make sure that if, if, if you have a book on the Holocaust, that you have one that has opposing, that has other How do you oppose the Holocaust? What? What? At the end, another teacher can be heard asking, how do you oppose the Holocaust? Petty can be heard on a longer recording obtained by NBC, answering that question with, quote, believe me, that's coming up. The district superintendent has issued an apology, saying, quote, we recognize there are not two sides of the Holocaust. Now, what about the other controversy in Texas, the abortion law? The Justice Department is planning to ask the Supreme Court to temporarily block the controversial abortion ban in Texas. The DOJ wants the law halted while legal challenges play out. This comes after a federal appeals court ruled on Thursday that the ban could remain in effect after a district court temporarily blocked it. The law bars most abortions after six weeks and also allows private citizens to sue providers or anyone who assists a woman in having the procedure. Conservative justices have previously refused to act on the Texas legislation. The DOJ has not said when it will formally petition the court. This comes as millions of U.S. families are about to receive their fourth enhanced child tax credit payment. The IRS says it's sending out checks Friday that average $428. The coronavirus relief package in March is making the credit fully refundable, triggering the payments. Columbia University researchers think the first two payments lifted more than 3 million kids out of poverty. But the IRS says it's hard to get the checks to low-income families that didn't file taxes in 2019 and 2020. And now let's turn to an update on Marine Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller. U.S. Marine Corps Judge Glenn Hines has stocked Scheller $5,000 in pay. He also ordered a letter of reprimand over Scheller's criticism on how senior military officials handled the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. Now, it's up to the Secretary of the Navy whether Scheller receives an honorable discharge or a general discharge under honorable conditions. Scheller's defense lawyer thinks the sentence was fair. According to media reports, he says Judge Hines criticized the government's conduct, including for leaking case documents about Scheller. The judge says it's not the court's role to investigate the leak, but that there should be a probe into the matter. He added Scheller won't comment on the matter until his discharge is processed. While Scheller pleaded guilty to all charges, he continued to call for accountability. He said, I believe the general officers have demonstrated that they are unable or unwilling to hold themselves accountable. As a result, I believe fundamental change needs to occur in the military. He went on to say, I am being held accountable for my actions. The general officers should be held accountable for their failures. He went on to say he hasn't been charged with making false statements because everything he said was true. Scheller's case has gripped the nation, with several lawmakers speaking out on his behalf. After yesterday's trial, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene said it takes great courage to speak out against leaders who lead those under them to failure, to death, adding it takes even more courage to plead guilty in the face of unknown consequences, adding why is Scheller the one on trial? And now before we end, a citizen has found a creative way in expressing frustration over potholes in Puerto Rico streets. This is Pink Bubbles, a character brought to life by a visual artist. He paints around potholes, wearing a pink outfit that includes mask, cape, and a chest shield with the letters PB. 
His intention is to alert drivers to avoid the potholes and to call the intention of local governments to take action to repair these streets. Recently, Puerto Rico's Department of Transportation reported it was assigned just over $200 million for the maintenance of the island's highway system. But what do you think? Let me know below. Thanks for tuning in to Deep Dive. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and have a wonderful weekend.